Hey guys, this is a look at a compressed air hand dryer I made. This works very similar to a Dyson Air Blade. You just put your hands in it, it creates two jets of compressed air. You pull your hands out and it uh, effectively wipes the water off your hands. The construction is very simple, basically two blade portions and a central uh, support column. This is one of the first projects I built when I got a new CNC machine. Uh, we just installed a central compressed air system. Uh, because the CNC needed that, and I figured, what else can we do with compressed air? And I came up with the idea of a, uh, making a hand dryer, and this was a good, a good first project to uh, learn uh, CNC on. Before making the full version, I also made this quick prototype. This is just one nozzle instead of four. It just plugs into the compressed air. You can see the very, very thin nozzle here. This was just made on the uh, uh, manual milling machine. Can't really dry your hands with this, but uh, it does... Uh, it proves the concept quite well. It also generates quite a lot of thrust. Like you can uh, it basically uh, floats up by itself like this. With one of the nozzles off, we can easily see how the uh, the uh, air nozzles are constructed. They're basically just a single piece of aluminum with an air channel milled down the center. There's two air nozzles, one on each side. Uh, the air nozzles basically consist of uh, a slightly um, area that's milled down slightly farther than the rest of the face of the nozzle. Uh, it took a few attempts to figure out the right, uh, the right thickness. I initially tried uh, one thousandth of an inch or about 25 micrometers, and that was too small. I then uh, remade it to uh, 100 micrometers, and that was too large, there was too much airflow, and so I eventually settled on uh, 50 micrometers, which is at right now. And after milling it down a few times, I eventually wasn't left with enough uh, material left from the original CNC operation, so I had to mill it down and dremel out a little bit so that the air can get uh, into the nozzles properly. And the other side is just a simple, uh, another simple bar that's been faced off. And there's some uh, room here for gaskets that I found weren't needed because the the facing operation is precise enough that when they're screwed together air doesn't there's not a, there's a small only a tiny amount of air leaks out between the gap I debated trying to drill a whole bunch of small holes to replace this uh, slit but uh, the slit arrangement seems to be the best it provides a very uniform air jet across the entire uh, across the entire width looking at the air gap in a little bit more detail you can see the this small portion here is the actual uh, gap portion that uh, that goes against the top uh, the top cover. The rest is just clearance to allow air to come in uh, cleanly from the channel. If you want to see these pieces being machined, I've got a ta time lapse of the machining process up. Uh, there should be a link on the screen right now. One of the biggest problems I had on this project was actually finding a proper valve for this. Uh, initially, I tried to find a foot valve because this uh, is currently is controlled by a foot pedal on the ground. But I couldn't find any reasonably priced foot valves that had a wide enough air opening to actually run this thing. I'd ordered a few different ones in from uh, eBay, but none of them, none of them are what were, uh, none, of them, none of them allowed enough air through. Uh, this does take actually quite a vast amount of air. Uh, just on a quick estimation, it takes something like 40 SCFM. That's equivalent to four uh, pneumatic uh, impact guns basically running simultaneously. So it does drain the tank very fast. Uh, luckily, it uh, it doesn't take too long to actually dry your hands, so it's not a major problem. I'm still trying to find a proper uh, pneumatic uh, foot valve because the it's it's not the best setup having to have a uh, this needs a 12 volt power supply to run the solenoid that goes in is plugged in actually to where the uh, to the uh, light fixture replacing one of the old incandescent lamps. Initially, the nozzles on the end of this had some little uh, protrusions to attempt to stop your skin from getting too close to the uh, compressed air nozzle. You can see a picture of that here based on the original 3D model. But I found that the, uh, the air coming out of the jet would tend to stick to those, uh, to those protrusions, and it would, the air jet would basically either go straight down or straight up. So uh, I ended up having to just machine those off. I would like to put some sort of protection there because it's not the best idea to get your skin very close to, a, to an air jet like this. If you have a little cut or something, the air can get under your skin, so that's a bad idea. So I'm figuring some sort of like a wire mesh screen to cover it up. 
I know it's a bit odd having a compressed air supply to the bathroom, but uh, if anyone's interested in buying one of these hand dryers, let me know. Uh, there's enough interest I could do a Kickstarter or something like that. One other odd thing I noticed about this is sort of a uh, something like an oscillation sound it makes. I don't know if you can hear it, but... And you can definitely feel uh, an oscillation, like if maybe one or two hundred hertz. And what I think is happening is the two air jets are coming out and alternately going above and below each other. Um, might take a bit more look into that if I can set up a smoke machine and a laser and we can look at it on the high-speed camera, although that's probably something for a separate video. Anyway, hope you found that video on the compressed air hand dryer interesting. Thanks for watching.